Securing America with me, Frank Gaffney, the program that's a kind of owner's manual for protecting the country we love against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to God's glory and that of his kingdom. We are looking at a world in flux, I think it's fair to say. Enemies abound, that's for sure. But friends are morphing before our very eyes. Some of them, I think, uh, perhaps to align better with those they perceive are rising powers, some uh, for reasons of their own, uh, internal political dynamics and the like. One of the most important of those countries, of course, uh, those longtime friends and close allies, is, of course, our neighbor to the north, Canada. It has been undergoing what can only be called, I guess, in the words of Barack Obama, a fundamental transformation. It seems to have begun in earnest with uh, Justin Trudeau's uh, response to the COVID pandemic in Canada, and now most recently um, measures that he's taken in response to incidents involving mass shootings in the United States. Tucker Carlson did a marvelous monologue on this subject recently, and we wanted to talk with one of our go-to resources in Canada, Christine Douglas Williams, to get her read on what is happening in her country and what it will mean for the rest of us if it continues to, uh, well, metastasize, shall we say. Christine is the author of, among other things, The Challenge of Modernizing Islam. She has been a very highly acclaimed, uh, indeed award-winning journalist for years. She writes for jihadwatch.org and robertspencer.org, um, the uh, colleague we value so much uh, in his own right, of course. And we're delighted to have a chance to visit with her, even though the reason for doing so is a It's always so great to join you, Frank. And I'm also an associate editor with Front Page Magazine. I, I love well, how you started out because it's a joy to be here, but the news is not good, unfortunately. Indeed. So talk with us about you know how you see what has been taking place in Canada. Uh, it, it seems shocking to me, and I missing something or seeing exactly what needs to be seen. There's a very important occurrence that took place in Canada a little, a little while back, and it's never been done before quite this way, where there has been a coalition formed between the NDP, the new Democrat party in Canada, led by Jagmeet Singh, and Justin Trudeau. This happened right after the trucker convoy, the freedom convoy, which by the way was very positive because it does show you that Canadians are on the side of righteousness, enough of them to have created a world ruckus when it came to this. I mean, the truck convoy, the freedom, it, it took, it, it got a lot of attention globally. The problem is that when this happened, there was a hope in the air for people who care about freedom that somehow this might mean a no confidence motion, the end to Justin Trudeau, who has definite totalitarian tendencies and it's being recognized globally. People talk about him, he, people joke about him. He's no joke, believe me. But what he did to ensure that he stays in power until at least the next election, 2025, was that he allied himself with the NDP party, who is worse than him, if you can imagine that. They're more socialist in their thinking. And he allied and formed a pact so that any bill that's introduced in Parliament, it's almost, almost impossible to stand against because the majority will end up voting on his behalf because this pact ensures that. For example, if a no confidence motion was set up, he'll pass it simply because the NDP and all the seats they hold in the House of Commons combined with the Liberal government, he's free. So this pact um, basically upholds him until 2025 at least. And any other bill that goes through Parliament, for example, the handgun ban, 
this is something as well that with votes in parliament, this agreement, this coalition agreement, it will pass. So it is no secret the kind of man that we have ruling this country. It is indeed terrifying. You guys in the United States have your own with, um, with, with Joe Biden, but you have certain laws. You have the First Amendment. You have the right to bear arms. Our laws are quite different in Canada. And if they don't get you through Canada's hate laws, you have people such as the Islamists that could take you to court in, in, in what's known as um, lawfare and bankrupt you. This is the situation in Canada. And these types of Islamist organizations, Justin Trudeau stands with, he supports them. He supports Marxist groups like Black Lives Matter. And that's no secret. We're not making this up. They came out and declared that they are Marxist in origin and they are against the nuclear family. So in Canada, what we see happening, and we share an awfully long border with the United States, it is really devastating what is going down here. People are rather concerned what the next steps will be, because let's face it, with this new gun ban and this host of firearms, only criminals and the government will be armed. Yeah. Let's face it. Well, this this was really the thrust of, of Tucker's um, commentary, which was, we are watching governments, not just the Canadian government, but others uh, that have disarmed their publics, moving very aggressively in the direction of uh, a, a totalitarian state. Uh, Australia and, and New Zealand come to mind. Um, we're watching this play out and it's happening so breathtakingly fast that I think most people, you know, can't believe it's occurring at all, let alone that the end result is likely to be not only a disarmed population, but a population that therefore cannot resist what they're dictated uh, to do by uh, people they may have elected, yes, but who have increasingly become autocratic uh, at best and at worst, really uh, quite totalitarian. And, and just a word further on the gun ban, because um, the, the extent to which the pretext for this was an event that didn't even happen in Canada. Uh, and, and we've had, to be fair, uh, several of them of late, including uh, one since the event in Uvalde, Texas, uh, uh, in, in Tulsa, that... Um, I'm sure there will be more, but for Justin Trudeau to deprive Canadians of their lawful right to bear arms, I understand you don't have the Second Amendment, which thank God we do, uh, but it, it does sound as though that's a sweeping change in the character of your country and may portend some very dramatic and ugly ones to follow. It it certainly is, Frank. And one thing that Justin Trudeau is noted for is that he presents these crazy ideas as caring about the Canadian public. But he doesn't consider that if you look at the history of mass shootings, in many of the cases, in fact, if not, I will, I will wager to say most, there is conversation with these individuals before where they told people or they gave hints about what they intended to do. Now, whether or not they obtained a legal a legal weapon is a different matter simply because if they didn't obtain it legally they had enough time given the kinds of messages that they were giving out prior to the incidents to go and obtain an illegal one so in essence what you see happening is that um justin trudeau as well as again south of the border you guys they are making it look as if they care about the public when they really do not care about the public. Yeah. And what they're doing is that they're advocating in a way indirectly for the market that's underground. They are caught. Hold that thought, Christine Douglas Williams, because we've got to take a short break. When we come back, I want to tease that out a little bit further with you and also talk about another country, Hungary, that seems to be taking a rather different line and uh, whether that's the model that we better hope we're emulating here. That and more straight ahead.